Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. The Republican National Committee now firmly in the hands of Donald Trump and his family. The party is now under the stewardship of, among others, the ex-president's daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, whose latest single, Anything is Possible, drops this Friday. But in addition to her burgeoning musical career, Lara Trump is hard at work reshaping the Republican Party into an organization based first and foremost around her father-in-law and his ongoing lies about the 2020 election, which he lost. As The Washington Post reports, quote, those seeking employment at the Republican National Committee after a Donald Trump backed purge of the committee this month have been asked in job interviews if they believe the 2020 election was stolen, according to people familiar with the interviews, making the false claim a litmus test of sorts for hiring. Lara Trump confirmed to NBC News senior Capitol Hill correspondent Garrett Haig today, the RNC is all in on pushing election fraud nonsense heading into this next election. Is it going to be the position of the RNC in 2024 that the 2020 election was not fairly decided or that it was stolen somehow? Well, I think we're past that. I think that's in the past. We learned a lot. Certainly, we took a lot of notes. Right now, we have 23 states uh, that have 78 lawsuits in these states to ensure that it is harder to cheat and easier to vote. Here at this organization, we had sort of the inverse of the, this debate this week. Our litmus test is the opposite of the RNC. We're going to be part of what we used to call a reality-based community, one where we acknowledge the basic fact that Joe Biden won the 2020 election by 7 million votes. The Republican National Committee apparently does not live in reality, instead choosing to recede into a fantasy world where the election was stolen from Donald Trump. Here's the thing that's the weirdest part of this whole thing, all right? Donald Trump is like a 50-50 coin flip to win the next election. He's leading or tied in, in just about every relevant poll right now. He's got a real shot of outright winning the election in November. But it's so revealing that the MAGA movement isn't actually interested in winning in a small-D Democratic sense. It really looks to all the world, based on the way they have undertaken things at the RNC and the campaign, they would actually rather essentially steal the election or, or finish the project of upending American democracy entirely. A total rejection of free and fair elections as an achievable aim is their intended goal. And this cultish devotion to the lie, the persistent, enduring lie about widespread election fraud in 2020, is one of their ways of accomplishing that. Logistically speaking, the problem with that strategy is that every single rational good faith actor can see the election was not stolen. And every time the big lie is marched into an institution where facts and reality matter, it gets laughed out of the room. If there's one thing that truly unites all Americans, it's that everyone hates paying more for stuff. That is why, when inflation sent the price of everyday goods soaring in the wake of the pandemic, you saw it reflected in poll after poll after poll. People's view of the economy plummeted. So did their approval of the president. In fact, this happened basically across the Western world. It was everyone's first taste of real sharp inflation in a generation. And guess what? People really hated it, which is, of course, completely understandable because, well, it really, really sucked. In 2020, your average family of four paid about $927 a month for groceries. At the height of inflation in 2022, the average was $1,307 a month. That's $400 more a month. Now, that has started to come down, actually, in real terms. The average at the end of last year was around $1,261, but again, still up from 2020. And the experience of paying more and more and, and feeling like prices are out of control and feeling squeezed translates to disaffection. And that disaffection is probably the single biggest advantage you can have as, say, the challenger to an incumbent president operating in a world in which prices have gone. And yet, the Republican challenger, President Biden, isn't running on lowering prices. He's actually running on jacking up prices on a huge amount of the goods we use every day. And I know it sounds like I'm making this up, but genuinely, and I want to be clear here, his core economic policy proposal right now is an across-the-board consumer sales tax for every single good imported into the United States. Now, he may call it a tariff, but it will just be passed along to consumers in a sales tax on every single good that is imported. And again, you do not need to take my word for it. Just listen to Donald Trump himself. Number one, I think we should have a ring around the collar, as mm -hmm. they say. Mm -hmm. I think when companies come in and they dump their products in the United States, they should pay automatically, let's say, a 10 percent tax. I'm a big believer in tariffs for two reasons. Number one, 
I fully believe in them economically when you're being taken advantage of by other countries. I would say to China, if you're building a plant on our border to build cars in Mexico and to sell them into the United States, I'm mm. putting a 50 percent tariff on all those cars. You use tariffs and sanctions against China. I did, and I did very well with it. As you know, we took in hundreds of billions of dollars in taxes through the tariffs, taxes and tariffs. Uh, is that what you want to do again? We have to do it. Okay, if you are a single issue inflation voter, there is only one candidate who wants to put a 10 percent tax that will be passed along to consumers as a sales tax on every single good that's imported. And here's the thing. This is not a hypothetical. Trump did a miniature version of this the last time he was president when he put tariffs on different Chinese goods. Here's how that worked out. According to analysis by the New York Fed, the average import tariff rate more than doubled in 2018 alone. It tangibly led to higher domestic consumer prices. Take the first two tariffs on washing machines and steel. Economists found that consumer prices for washing machines, which have been going down steadily since 2012, almost immediately jumped back up after Trump's tariffs. In fact, the New York Times found that the washer-specific tariffs raised costs for importers like LG and Samsung. The steel import tariffs raised costs for some domestic manufacturers like Whirlpool, pushing prices up for consumers. Now Trump wants to do it again, but bigger, okay? Now, you can argue this is going to, in the long run, help American manufacturing. There's some argument on the other side of it. But in the short term, like, what's going to happen is the prices are going to go up. The Democratic Alliance Center for American Progress found that Trump's proposed new tariffs would cost typical households an extra $1,500 per year. Here's what that might look like. Trump is proposing a 10% tariff. If that 10% gets passed on to consumers, which is generally how it works, things will cost more. Now, we don't know exactly how much everything would cost, but you just add 10% on the back of the napkin. Here's the cost of lending, living under the Trump tax. Start with groceries, which has been a site of a lot of angst, right? A dozen egg costs about $3. Once you apply the Trump tax, that goes up to $3.30. And with the U.S. importing more than 4 million eggs a year, that could cost American consumers over $1.2 million. If you like oranges, those currently go for about $1.53 per pound. With the 10% Trump tax, it would be $1.68 per pound, which would cost American consumers almost $71 million for the nearly half a billion pounds that we import. Or how about bananas? We don't really grow them in the U.S., do we? They average about 63 cents per pound, going up to 69 cents per pound with the Trump tax. And thanks to the U.S. importing more than 10 billion with a B pounds per year, that could cost Americans $609 million. That's a $609 million tax on American consumers. Then there's tomatoes. They go for about 213 per pound. Apply a 10% Trump tax. They would be 234 per pound, potentially costing Americans three and a half million dollars thanks to the 16 and a half million pounds we import per year. The point is, if you are spending 1,200 bucks a month on groceries, add another 120 of the bill. That's more than even the peak of inflation in 2022, which topped off at 9%. This is 10%, okay? And it's not just groceries. How about the refrigerator? You need to keep those groceries fresh. Right now, the average cost of a new fridge is about $1,300. With the Trump tax, that could go up to $1,430, costing Americans $1.95 billion for the 15 million refrigerators that we import. Again, that's a $1.95 billion in new taxes. What about the car you need to drive to the grocery store? On average, a new car costs about $48,808 today. With the Trump tax, it could cost $53,684 with Americans potentially taking a $66.3 billion hit across the more than 13 million cars we import. And that's not even with the 50% tariff that he says he wants to slap on imported cars, which would make it another $25,000. Even the smartphone in your pocket costs on average about $940 right now. With the Trump tax, that could go up to $1,034, with Americans potentially paying an extra $13.2 billion dollars for the nearly 141 million smartphones we import per year. Everyone hates when you have to pay more for things. Inflation is one of the biggest vulnerabilities for a sitting president. And yet, here's Donald Trump in the year of our Lord, 2024, running against President Biden, promising to make things more expensive for every American. 
Well, that brings us to Arizona Senate candidate, currently Senate candidate, Carrie Lake. Now, she previously ran for governor back in 2022, where she emerged as one of the fiercest defenders of Trump's coup, as well as a general antagonist to those in the press who tried to correct her lies. We had a fraudulent election, a corrupt election, and we have an illegitimate president sitting in the White House. The fake news wants us to think that that guy got 81 million votes. Okay. All righty. I am going to not only be the governor of Arizona for four years, I'm going to do two terms. I'm going to be your worst freaking nightmare for eight years. And we will reform the media as well. We're going to make you guys into journalists again. So get ready. It's going to be a fun eight years. I can't wait. It is going to be fun. She lost. But I guess to her perverse credit, Carrie Lake really fully committed to the bit, going around to any fringe MAGA outlet that would take her and claiming, without any evidence at all, that the 2022, the midterm election that she lost, were stolen as well. We know that we won. We know that we showed up in droves and we know that they intentionally sabotaged Election Day. So we're going to fight to get the rightful duly elected governor myself into office. We won our election. I know that that my uh, opponent who is sitting in the uh, governor's office is a fraud and we are fighting that in the courts. And so I really understand what President Trump is up against because they did the same thing to him in 2020. We cannot have the election stand. The judge should declare me the rightful winner. I am the rightful winner. And we should move on and reclaim our government, our state government. It's been hijacked and stolen by a bunch of people who know this election was fraudulent. The people already know who the legitimate governor is and you're looking at her, Steve. Now, she lost the election. She did win the best webcam in all of politics competition years running. It is the best. Donald Trump backed an entire slate of election deniers in 2022, Carrie Lake among them, and they all lost. But the thing about Lake that really makes her stand out is she appears to be the only one who pulled a big lie of her own, right, and insisted she was the real winner, actually. She did this so often, in fact, that she got herself sued by an elections official in Arizona. Republican Stephen Richer, the Maricopa County recorder who oversaw Lake's loss, again, a Republican, took her to court over her repeated false claims that Richer rigged the election against her. He sued her for defamation in June last year, and Lake has been stalling on the case ever since until now. She just filed a motion for default judgment, which essentially means she is not contesting her liability. Because if we have seen time and time and time and time again when it comes to lies about election fraud, you can't defend the indefensible. I'm joined now by the man who is suing Carrie Lake, Stephen Richer. He's the Maricopa County Recorder, along with his lawyer, Jared Davidson, a staff attorney at Protect Democracy. Stephen, let me start with you and just tell me about what prompted you to take the somewhat extraordinary step of, of, of filing this lawsuit in the aftermath of that of that 2022 election. Yeah, it wouldn't stop. And simply put, that's that's why we felt like we had to do this. We waited until she filed those claims with the court. She lost at the Superior Court. She lost at the Court of Appeals. She lost at the Arizona Supreme Court. Then she filed another lawsuit. Then I was hoping she would finally get a new job, but she kept talking about it, and she made it the centerpiece of all of her fundraising appeals and of her political prominence and even a book deal. And so I figured... She's not getting a new job. I am the job. And defaming my good name to her millions of followers, as she's so proud to proclaim, was her her profession at that point. And so, really, this is the first time and hopefully the last time I've ever sued anyone in my individual capacity. But I talked to the team at Protect Democracy, and we thought we had a strong case. And, indeed, we do have a strong case. Jared, let me, let me ask you um, just legally the significance of today, uh, uh, the filing that she's not basically not going to contest the defamation. She, she wants to fight on the grounds of, of damages. But that means basically, you caught me. I can't go into court and say what I was saying was true about Mr. F uh, Richer. That's exactly right, Chris. This is an unequivocal admission by Ms. Lake that she has no evidence whatsoever to support her claims that Mr. Richer engaged in misconduct in the 2022 election. Of course, we all knew that she had no evidence all along, um, but Ms. Lake has repeatedly been stating that she is looking forward to showing receipts. And yesterday she told her supporters that instead 
she has no evidence. She's waving the white flag. And so now we are moving forward, not on liability, but rather uh, we are going to be moving ahead uh, to determine not whether Ms. Lake has to pay damages for the harm she's done to Stephen, but how much she's going to have to pay for the harm. I want to talk, Stephen, to you about about that aspect of it. I mean, you're again, I want to stress this. You're a Republican official in Maricopa County, right? Yes. And and you were right. t- you were targeted by Ms. Lake in some of the sort of Baroque conspiracy theories that she was weaving. And, I, you know, from my perspective, if, this is someone who lied about the 2020 election. It seemed obvious she was lying about the 2022 election when she said she hadn't won. But but I also know that people on the wrong side of these sorts of lies can really have their lives upended, their careers. Like, what what is it meant to be the target of these lies? Well, it doesn't take much imagination to foresee the possibility that of your millions of followers, when you tell them that this man, Stephen Richer, has committed the most heinous crimes against our democracy, it doesn't take much imagination that one of your followers, two of your followers, might do something very extreme based yep. off of that. So in recent months, we've had two people arrested for threats to me. I get on a daily basis wow. messages about why I should be in Gitmo, why I should be in jail. And it, it, like I said, this needs to stop. That's why we filed this lawsuit. It is a bit rich, as Jared mentioned, that this is coming from somebody who said she had all the evidence and she was going to fight to the bitter end. Well, she just put up the white flag. She doesn't have any evidence. And while she's lying about me, she is lying to Arizonans, some Arizonans who have gone to jail, some Arizonans who have given her campaign money. It was all a lie that is now entered in court. Yeah, Lake's uh, team on Tuesday filed that default judgment motion that indicated she wouldn't challenge a culpability. They said that Richer should turn over relevant medical and psychiatric records to show his health was negatively affected. As he detailed in his lawsuit, Lake requested a jury for the default judgment hearing. Uh, so, Jared, there will be some adjudicative process here. But again, it will not be on the on the basic facts here, which she was so eager to contest. She has completely waved the white flag. This is all going to be on the damages portion of this. That's exactly right. Ms. Lake has conceded that she has no evidence whatsoever to defend herself. Again, we've known it all along, but she's been telling her supporters she's got the receipts. Um, We've known that she doesn't. And so now that she has surrendered, the case will move forward purely on the question of how much she's going to have to compensate Stephen for the immense harm that she's caused him. Stephen, just to zoom out for a second, you're, you're sort of right on this fault line of American politics, particularly in Maricopa County and particularly in yeah. Arizona. Um, and we've seen Republican members of the officials in your party uh, on both sides of it, right? And it doesn't really have to do about ideology. I don't know what your views are on, like, tax rates or abortion or a million different ideological questions. It's really just on the line of this basic fidelity to the truth and the facts and how... How, what has that done to, to politics in your state? So, so tax rates should be as low as possible. I want to make sure we're clear on that. <laughs> okay. So that's how I feel about tax rates. I figured as but, much. Uh-huh. But two plus two, <laughs> two plus two equals four. And that's a truth that always has been a truth and will be a truth. Unfortunately, it has become something of a litmus test in some quarters. Now, not, it's not entirely dispositive, and I'm going to buck that trend in my election, but it unfortunately factored in significantly, and I will say to the ultimate detriment of Republican candidates, many of those candidates who won their primary based off of the big lie, that didn't carry over to the median Arizona voter. It's a losing strategy. It's lost in 23. It's lost in 22. It's lost in 21. It lost in 20. But more than that, it's immoral, and people know better, and leaders need to stop giving this any legitimacy. All right. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it. 